There was something else I saw at the time that really piqued my interest. It was a little study here done in 1981. Not a little study, it was a fairly good sized study. Uh, these researchers in this case uh, were looking to see uh, whether there are other, some other factors in, uh, amongst smokers that might affect the risk of getting lung cancer. And so this is a three-dimensional three chart, as you can see. Uh, along the one, I don't know whether I can, oh. If I point this thing, you won't see what I'm pointing at, but in any case, okay, let's do it this way. There's, there's, three, there's two axes there. There's a X, Y uh, axis on the, on the bottom, as you can see. Along the, on the left, that's the amount of beta carotene being consumed amongst smokers smoking various amounts of, of uh, cigarettes, if you will. And you can see along the left side, I wish I could get, this is not working here. Right. Okay. Can you see things? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to want, well, I can't get away from there, I'm trapped. <laughs> not the first time I've been trapped. <laughs> But in any case, look at, look at the chart. Okay, here we go. I've got to be able to see. Yeah. Can I? Oh, it doesn't get there. Oh, well. Pardon? I can't go over there because then I, I don't have this. Okay. okay, here we go. So in any case, oh, it still didn't show up. I think it's on the side of the problem. What? Oh. Okay. This is too scientific for me. <laughs> so anyhow, thank you. Uh, so here's a chart, as you can see there, the results of this big study. Along one axis, along here, is the amount of beta carotene being consumed. Beta carotene, as you know, being the pre-vitamin A, if you will, it turns into vitamin A as it was said in those days. Along the other axis over here is the amount of smoking, the length of smoking, up to people who were smoking more than 30 years. Now, if we look and see what, what those results were, if we come over here on the right hand, over on the far side here, these are the heaviest smokers. And they're divided up according to how much cancer they get. They're dividing up according to, um, basically, how much beta carotene they were consuming while they're smoking. And what was found in here, there are four different groups, if you will, from low to high. The ones cons the, with the least consumption of beta carotene, only from plants, mind you. Pardon me, okay? The w ones consuming the least amount of beta carotene, you can see a huge effect. The r risk of death for those people was very high. And then if you go, you know, up the scale, in a sense, with beta carotene consumption, four different groups, the more beta carotene they consumed, the lower was the lung cancer risk. Now, the fact that this was, was basically, okay, I've got too much equipment here. <laughs> Never mind, I'm, I'll just over here and do this. Um, so, so the, 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 the idea was this. If you look at the right-hand part of the chart, you can see what we call a dose-response relationship. The more beta-carotene they consumed, the lower was the lung cancer risk. Wow. I mean, lung cancer and smoking were already connected in those days fairly well. But to just the mere notion that something like beta-carotene, a nutrient, could have such an effect on lung cancer um, I, I talked about it a little bit, got quoted someplace, and one of my friends who was in the business of trying to get people to stop smoking, it was a WHO, a very fine fellow, uh, was concerned that I shouldn't be talking about this because it's a hard enough job to get people to stop smoking. I understood that point of view. That wasn't the issue. But in this particular case here, what it showed to me was an indication that nutrition, in the form of beta carotene in this case, really had a pro prominent effect on a serious disease like lung cancer, among people consuming a lot of cigarettes. So that was, uh, was quite stark, to say the least. Um, 
So a little bit of clarity, if you will, promotes cancer. Mind you, this is 1981 this was published. It's saying even if you smoke, I hate to say this, <laughs> I don't want to send the wrong message, even if you smoke and you eat your spinach, your risk of getting lung cancer might be close to zero or background. That sounds ridiculous, but that's actually what these data here showed. I'm not sure I can go along with that idea in a larger context, obviously, but nonetheless, what it did for me is to say, nutrition matters. It really matters. And at that time, we already were doing our research in the laboratory about another nutrient and another cancer. And so we can generalize here, if you will, the press of association of nutrition with serious disease, just to put it in a vista general vernacular. And that, a very exciting idea. But in 1971, 10 years before that, there was this publication from a big study there that when people quit smoking, look at the bottom part of the chart, when people quit smoking, they tend to get less disease the, more, the longer it is that they have quit smoking. And so what it says here, for all these diseases, not just lung cancer up on the upper left-hand corner or heart disease, but it turns out all of these diseases were recorded. The number of deaths, mortality if you will, the, the mortality rates for these different diseases after five to 10 years of, eating the, of, of quitting smoking, it was almost back to, to a baseline. So another rather spectacular observation that nutrition is not only important in a serious disease like lung cancer comes from smoking, uh, a lot of other diseases too. I found that really exciting at that time. It really certainly had an impact on me and the way we were doing our research that tended to be focused on one thing at a time. So we talk about reversal. I was seeing here evidence that disease could be reversed. 